Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about uh, theory of probabilities um, in a little bit more formal way. Um, this lecture is part of the whole um, course of advanced mathematics for um, uh, teenagers, uh, primarily high school students, which is presented on unizor.com. Um, and I do suggest you to first um, read the notes to this lecture, because every lecture actually has notes, before you um, listen to this particular lecture. Uh, it will help you to um, get into this um, formality uh, or, or a little bit more formal approach to theory of probabilities a little better. So anyway, um, I spent some time during the previous lectures explaining what actually probability is about. We have introduced a few concepts like random experiment, um, event, elementary event, probability, um, but we didn't really approach it from more rigorous standpoint. Well, the rigorous approach to theory of probabilities um, was initiated by mathematician uh, Andrei Kolmogorov, who actually built the foundation, a solid mathematical foundation, based on a set theory, theory of measure, and uh, certain um, theorems related to measuring of uh, infinite sets. We will concentrate only on final sets and final um, results of any random experiment. So if we are talking about random experiments of, let's say, rolling a dice, uh, we are talking about finite number of outcomes. So in this course, I'm talking only about certain finite, finite uh, number of elementary events or events in general uh, or random experiments with certain number of outcomes. Everything will be finite. It's much easier. However, the concepts are exactly the same as in a uh, real foundation of the theory of probabilities based on um, infinite sets. All right, so our purpose right now is to translate the probabilistic language which we were using before into more mathematical language related to uh, set theory and uh, measure theory, etc. All right. So, this lecture is dedicated only to random experiments with um, symmetrical uh, outcomes. So, all, all outcomes, and there are only finite number, let's say, n different outcomes from random experiments. And these elementary events, <coughs> as we call them, all they have equal chances to occur. So in this particular case, um, since they all had equal chances to occur, it means that as the number of experiments um, tends to infinity, the frequency of occurrence of one particular outcome, elementary event, out of n, different, is supposed to tend to 1n. Because that's what actually means um, that all our elementary events, <coughs> all our outcomes, have equal chances to occur, right? Equal chances means as the number of experiments goes to infinity, and there are n different um, outcomes which are completely symmetrical. It means that the frequency of each one of them is tending to 1 over n. Um, now, frequency is obviously the number of cases when this particular elementary event occurs divided by the total number of uh, experiments. All right. Um, what does it mean? It means actually that we can associate um, the number 1 over n with any particular event, elementary event out of whatever the possible outcomes are, and we can call it the probability. 
So this is a, a general explanation of the probability. Now let's talk about how can we um, translate it into a little bit more mathematical language. Well, first of all, I should consider elementary events. Now, elementary events are those events which cannot be subdivided any further, and in this particular case we're talking about elementary events which are completely symmetrical. Examples. Rolling the dice, so one particular number on the top, being one or two or three or four or five or six, are elementary events. They're all symmetrical, they all have exactly the same um, uh, chance to occur, and that's why we associate uh, with each of these six different elementary events the probability of one six was rolling the dice right now flipping the coin we have two results tails or heads and again they have equal chances which means that we can associate one half as the probability of each elementary event now from these elementary events we can build some other events like for instance, what's the probability of having a, an even number on the top of the dice? Even means two or four or six. So it's basically a combination of certain elementary event. And that's what we call an event. So any kind of event can be decomposed into certain number of elementary events which are completely unrelated to each other. So the event, even number on the top, is equivalent of two or four or six on the top. So it's basically uh, a, a, a combination of these three different elementary events. What does it remind you? Well, I think it immediately reminds the, the set theory and um, the uh, ability to combine certain uh, subsets to get bigger subsets. So if you consider a set of points, for instance, and the point can be actually our model of the elementary event. Then, if you would like to combine certain elementary events into a bigger event, it's like combining certain number of elements of a set, points in this particular case, into a combination, into a bigger uh, subsets. So that's the key to whatever abstraction we are going to make. So. Um, what we have actually talked about. We talked about um, all the probabilistic terms and now I'm going to translate it into terms which are a little bit more mathematical. All right? So, here is what I'm proposing to do. Now, we have a random experiment and the results, the elementary, the smallest results, the outcomes of this random experiments, that's what we call elementary events. Now, I will consider a set of elements as a model of a random experiment with certain number of elementary events as outcomes. So, the set of elements is basically a set of elementary events which can occur as a result of a um, random experiment. Okay, so now we are talking about random experiments with finite number of elementary events. So that's why we have to consider a set of, not just of elements, a uh, set of finite number n elements. Alright, so the mathematical equivalent of the random experiments with n uh, outcomes is my set of n elements. Okay, now we are talking that we can combine certain elementary elements into ele elementary events into an event, like from the different elementary events, which are the outcomes of the rolling the dice, we can combine three of them two, four, and six, and said, okay, this constitutes an event of having an even number on top, right? So, what I can talk about um, equivalency in the set theory is any subset 
is an event. So my elements are elementary events and the subset which is a combination of elements obviously. Uh, any subset can be an event. Well there are many different subsets. Actually there was a very interesting problem of how many subsets does a set of n elements have. So that, that actually was discussed before. But anyway, um, so we have some kind of an equivalency equivalency between um, random experiments with n outcomes with a set of n elements. Any event, which is a combination of elementary events, is basically a subset of this set. Now let's talk about the probability. Well, we have actually assigned the probability of 1 over n for every elementary event in the random experiments of and different symmetrical outcomes. So what I can say here is I can say that the measure of each element is 1 over n. So what does it mean? I've just associated a measure. Now what is an, uh, some kind of an, uh, an analogous consideration of this? Well, it's, it's actually very simple. Um, it's, uh, for instance, uh, you have a, a, a field, let's say, and you divide it into squares. And each square has certain area, right? Let's say it, it has one square meter, right? So these are my elements, which basically are equivalent of um, elementary events and any combination let's say this one three elements it constitutes an event and if the measure of one particular element is known then the combination of these three elements can be calculated as a sum of them right so in this case it's three square meters so what I'm saying is that the measure of a subset that the measure of a subset is a sum of measures of its elements. So we are combining certain elements which constitute our subset and their total measure, which is a sum of um, uh, measures of each element, is a measure of our event. So this measure is a probability. So the probability is equivalent to this measure, as we say. We can measure the angles, we can measure areas, we can measure lengths, we can measure lots of different things. So we can measure elements. How can we measure elements? Well, I'll just assign the measure, which is a numerical value of one ends to every element and I can assign the measure of any subset as a sum of the measures of all elementary events. Now this um, uh, a analog with, uh, with area is, is very very useful in the theory of probabilities. Um, you can always just keep it uh, in your mind that this is a picture of the probability. Probability is a measure all right, so um, we've got the measure of every element, and that's the equivalent of the probability of the elementary event. We've got the probability of any subset, which is an equivalent of the probability of any event, which is a combination of elementary events. What else? Okay, um, what's the probability of having no events at all? Well, that means that what, do, what does it mean that nothing happens? Well, it's an empty subset in our set theory. In our new terminology, if we want to know what's the probability of nothing happens, well, the probability is the sum of all the measures of the elements which, constitutes, which constitute an em a empty subset. Well, how many elements are an empty subset? Zero. <laughs> 
right? So out of n elements which are constituting our set, zero elements combined together constitute the empty set. And obviously, since the number is zero, their measure, the measure of empty set is, is zero, so the probability of occurring nothing is zero. Now, what's the probability of occurring something? We don't really care what occurs. So, some event occurs. So, either the dice falls on one or two or three or four or five or six. So, anything goes, basically. Well, what is this? That's the probability of an entire set. So, all the elements should be combined together. The measure of each one is 1 over n, and there are n elements, so we have the probability of the entire full set, uh, of the entire, uh, 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 I think it's called full subset, actually, uh, is equal to 1. So, the probability of nothing happens is 0, probability, probability that something happens is 1. So these are two extremes. Everything else is in between 0 and 1. So if my subset contains m um, elements in it, then the probability associated with this subset, its measure, is equal to m over n. All right, so we know how to measure um, the probability of every event. We just add the probabilities of uh, elements, uh, ele elements uh, which constitute that particular subset. So event is a subset, it contains elements, so we add them up together. All right, that, that's covered. And what's, um, what's also interesting is um, le let's go back to this uh, example of having uh, an even number on top of the dice, 2, 4, or 6. Um, well, what's very important in this case is to understand that you have the probability you have the probability of each event, right? So the probability of 2 is 1, 6, probability of 4 is 1, 6, probability of 6 is 1, 6, and the probability of 2 or 4 or 6 equals to 3, 6, which is 1, two, one over 2, 1 half. You see, the, the, the probability is not just a measure, it's additive measure. So the measure is additive if you have two different subsets. So this is your set, it has elements, okay? Now, this is one subset, and this is another subset. Now, you have measure of this thing, and you have measure of this thing. Now, let's consider a subset which contains this uh, and this element, so all elements. It's basically the result of a logical OR, all right? So, the probability of a point being um, an element of this OR element of that Base basically is equal to sum of these probabilities because the measure of the combined area is basically a sum of these two areas as long as they don't intersect obviously because if they intersect then you count twice something but if they don't if these two events are completely independent then their measure is always a sum of measures and that's why their probability is measure of these two probabilities so that's kind of an explanation of what actually this um, equivalent, equivalent, uh, equivalency to measure theory is about. So what's important is to understand that to, pr to, to have this parallel between theory of probabilities and more mathematically expressed set theory and measure theory is to understand that we need to have certain elements of this um, analogy. We should have a set of elementary, of elements, each one of them is an, uh, an elementary event. We have to have measure and we really have to have this measure as additive measure. It should be additive. And we can always say that the measure of the entire set should be equals to 1 and that gives us the baseline, 
So everything else, the subset of this set would be smaller than one, down to an empty subset which has a measure of zero. So that's basically my um, uh, my explanation of how to um, provide more mathematical background to theory of probability, and um, and and that actually allows to use. The, the, the purely mathematical apparatus to, to theory of probabilities. Before um, this foundation, this mathematical foundation was, was, basic, was, was developed um, uh, for theory of probabilities, we could not really calculate lots of different very, very sophisticated things in the theory of probabilities. It, it lacked that mathematical apparatus. Well, since the foundation was basically established since we can say that the set theory and measure theory are basically the foundations the theory of probabilities we can have full full scale of mathematics to uh, to deal with theory of probabilities and its uh, problems now let me repeat that in this course i'm talking only about finite sets uh, of uh, elements as being equivalent to certain um, random um, experiments with finite number of occurrences. Now, in most of the cases, all these occurrences are equal chanced. So, the probability of every element, which is uh, one of the elements in, in that set, uh, which, which is an uh, analogy of the random experiment, would be equal to 1 over n, where n is the number of elements or number of outcomes from this random experiments. We will deal only will, with, these, with these finite distributions of probabilities. Well, that's basically it for, uh, for what I wanted to say. Okay, so finally, um, the sample space which is a, a, a random experiment with all the outcomes basically is equivalent to mathematical set uh, the elementary event elementary event is element of this set any event is a subset and probability is additive measure. Additive in the sense that if you have two subsets which do not have any intersection then the measure of two of them is equal to a uh, sum of measures of each one. Um, with a condition that the entire set has a measure of one, basically. So the probability of anything happen is one, basically. That's what it is. All right, so that's it for today. This is the lecture uh, about certain mathematical foundations in case our experiment produces n symmetrical outcomes. I will spend some time to talk about asymmetry if certain elements are not exactly the same as others. But the uh, analogy is very much working quite well in this case as well. That would be probably the next lecture. So that's it for today. I do suggest you to read again the notes. You know, when you're reading something which is written, it's completely different kind of um, uh, sensing uh, the material than you're listening. So it will complement each other. It's basically the same material, just maybe presented in a, a written uh, form. Um, I also encourage you to sign, uh, 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 to, to register basically on, on the unizor.com because it allows you to, to take exams, for instance, and basically to make the whole educational process a process um, rather than just um, occasional reference points for this particular lecture, that particular lecture, I do suggest you to take an entire course.
as basically self-study or, or homeschooling or whatever else. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck.